everyone. Um, thank you for staying for the second Badge Life presentation. Hopefully you won't be too sick of it by the end of this, and I can tell you right now I will not be as funny as Carrie, although I can try. Um, so a little bit about me, because um, my path to hardware is a bit unusual. Um, I'm an attorney. Um, I work for Electronic Arts. Um, I primarily do privacy uh, law, working with security teams. Um, how on earth am I part of this badge life thing? Um, while I was taking the bar, I was doing the most amount of procrastinating that I could possibly do. Um, and someone reached out to me and was like, are you going to DEF CON again this year? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, you want to start a village? And I was like, doing what? And they're like, privacy and cryptography. And I was like, let's do it. So we like post on the DEF CON forums, we'd like to do this thing. And Dark Tangent responds, how can we support you? And they gave us a room and it's four year, five years later, four years later, and now we're becoming a nonprofit. So um, follow Crypto Village um, on Twitter. Uh, and I want to give a shout out to Carl Kosher, Supersat, and Justin Colbertson, who are my other partners in crime in this. Um, Carl is a hardware genius uh, who primarily in his, in his day job hacks airplanes and prior to that hacked cars before it was cool. Um, and so it begins, how did I get involved? And so I went to my first DEF CON and they handed these out and I was like, this is really freaking cool. Um, I got the green one because I was like support, I was working with the EFF, I was an intern at the time, a legal intern, and I was like, I'll go to this thing called DEF CON, it sounds awesome. Um, and the next year I went, or the first year I went for the Crypto and Privacy Village, um, these badges were floating around and I was like, this is so cool, I want one of these. I've never, I just blinky, like I was just uh, ha mesmerized by like the simplicity, the retro, it was sponsored by Tinder, um, it was just so many great things about it, I was like, this is really cool. And I was like, ooh, yeah. So, I have a friend um, that I made, Jorge Lacoste, and hopefully he's watching uh, right now. And he and I met at my very first DEF CON because I was like, hey, I went up to a group of guys and I was like, do you guys know how to hack this like green DEF CON badge? I think it's really cool. And we became fast friends. And one day on the phone with him, because we would get like really jazzed about like the next DEF CON, and this was like in January, about eight, nine months before the DEF CON, DEF CON he called me and he was like, so, um, those badge things are really cool. What if I made one in association with the Crypto and Privacy Village? That'd be really cool. Uh, would you be interested in that? And I was like, sure, Jorge, like, whatever. Like, you you do you. I'll, like, support you in any way I can uh, financially. Um, we'll put the Crypto Village behind it, uh, but we don't have any cash, and I have no hardware skills to help you, but sure, let's do this. So I was like, he's never going to like do this. Next thing I know, I get this document about like, I don't know, a couple weeks later and it's like the Crypto Village badge. I was like, oh shit, it's happening. And so <laughs> we made it to about April and we were like, wow, we can't do this just the two of us. We have like one person who knows what they're doing but is doing their first badge and me going, um, what's KiCad? Uh, how do we order things from China? Um, wait, what, like, what do I need to do? What's a microcontroller? So <laughs> we reach out and we're like, you know, anyone want to help us? Because this is how you basically put it together. And I will say, um, the great thing about Carrie's presentation is that everything he did his first time around, I did not do. And we still have not done. Pricing, comparison, choosing board houses, no way. <laughs> Cutting costs, absolutely not. <laughs> However, I will, Mention, remind me at the end of this presentation to point out his last slide about how he wants to like upscale for next year. I'm telling you, that's the bug. So Carl Kosher was like, ooh, what are you looking for? And so it began. Um, coasters. Uh, so are we are making our first uh, badge and we're you know ahead of schedule. Um, we, we get some of the tiny parts assembled in China. We use PCB way and they solder on the LEDs backwards. They send us 100 of these, because we also did 100 for our first run, and we were like, well, uh, PCB way, you screwed up. Like, we're, we're relying on, you know, you know, this guidance, and they were like, no. And so what do we have? We basically handed them out as coasters, um, because what else are you supposed to do with a bunch of PCBs? Um, so we reordered, that was a $1,000 mistake. So already, we are spending more money than Carrie has. 
and uh, we're like three months in. So ultimately, this was the final product, and I have it with me. Um, we found these really awesome, uh, like retro bubble displays, um, and bought as many of them as we possibly could. And if you you'll see on the original badge on the next picture, there's like a tiny bug, and I was I do the puzzles for Crypto Privacy Village. I love doing uh, crypto cryptography-based puzzles, privacy-based puzzles. I think it's really fun. Classical crypto is really interesting to me. Um, and so I was like, I'm going to make this called the gold bug after Poe's poem. Like, let's have the badge be part of the puzzle. Basically, the idea is, is that there are uh, 12 LEDs, like a clock. Originally, actually, it was supposed to be a compass. We were going to have a compass. There were a whole lots of goals and dreams that we had that did not make it to uh, fruition. Um, and the badge looks is a circle because that's how, sorry, Jorge, that's all Jorge knew how to draw shape-wise, aside from a square in KiCad. At least that's what I remember him telling me. And then I was like, why are the letters like upside, like sideways? He's like, I can't figure out how to make them go parallel. <laughs> so I, I'm like, okay, well, sure. And I was like, can we make it like a bug somewhere? Just like a, a gold bug, you know, somewhere. And so he's like, this is what I was able to do. So <laughs> there's this tiny bug on it. And I was like, it actually is, is really, it turned out wonderful. Just the bubble displays are great. And when you type in basically the flags to the puzzle, it lights up one of the LEDs around uh, the uh, circle and you can tell and signal to people which puzzles you've solved. So that was basically all we wanted it to do. Uh, we also had like party modes and other words you could type in and you had to like labor and click through each. Um, and, and it went over very well. Um, I will say, so this is Jorge. Um, uh, this is how we actually met Hackaday folks. Um, these photos are from this article that Hackaday uh, did on uh, electronic badges of DEF CON. And basically Jorge and two of his friends who then became the Andexor team that made the Bender badge, uh, sat in a hotel room all through DEF CON fixing these badges while I was running around the crypt doing Crypto Village stuff and going, we need more badges, like work harder. <laughs> and um, to this day, I'm very thankful for everything that they've done and the work that they did to help um, put this together. Uh, Carl Kosher ended up doing a lot of the programming for this. Um, this is my favorite feature that I want to call out. Um, and let me turn up the... There's going to be no volume on this, I don't think. So, I don't know. I don't think I can make volume. But there's a video on the Hackaday article about this, and basically Carl uh, had one of the controllers without a radio uh, transmit to AM, and when you uh, tuned it to a particular station, it would do a puzzle, and then it would play the Tetris theme song. Um, and I can show that to people later. Uh, I do have that badge with me, and so we can we can make that happen. Um, so many thanks again to those folks um, for, for the labor. Um, and, and Carl loved the badge so much, he wore it in his like car hacking, truck hacking talk. Uh, you can see he's wearing it uh, for Wired, which I thought was funny. So badge life, what is badge life? It is a term that uh, one of the queer con folks who makes those badge um, actually came up with, and it's the, um, probably most of you fall into that category, but you don't even know it. Um, you may not do a particular badge, but all of a sudden you get the bug of doing hardware, and you're like, next time I'm going to do bigger, better. I'm going to spend more time. Oh, 10 cents, that's nothing. 100 to 500? Sure, I'll do that, no problem. Um, and so year two begins. And I was like, I am not doing this alone. <laughs> like, there are other people who've done this. Like, reach out to me. And, and it had started picking up at this point. Like, you could tell there were a couple more floating around. Maybe six or seven different groups did badges that year. And there would be people lined out of our village, like, like 500 deep. And we're like, you all aren't getting badges. Like, we're sorry we didn't make that many. We didn't like work that hard. And uh, so I said, like, hey, like, reach out to me. Like, let's get together. Um, and so we got together on uh, Slack, and we were like, this is great. Like, we're really communicating. And the, the best thing about the Hackaday badge for Belgrade, Belgium, Belgrade, Belgrade, is that was the badge we were going to do for our second year. Like, full keyboard, messenger, it was going to be amazing. It was going to communicate. Um, I think it's still one of Carl's dreams, if he's listening. One day we'll make it happen. And we get to about July, so about four weeks before DEF CON, we haven't ordered a single prototype. 
No, we maybe have boards, but we haven't assembled ones. We haven't figured out which buttons we want to use. Um, there are a lot of issues, so we post on the board. It's very sad. Like this is canceled. It's all over. We're not gonna make. We're not gonna make a badge, and we're very sad. But badge life happens, right? It itches at your brain that you need to solve a problem. You want to create something. So what are you going to do? Um, so we buy some toaster ovens, and we are like, you know what? Let's order boards. Let's order parts. Let's do this in three weeks. So we order boards. We get a prototype. Carl hand solders it. He's like, yeah, it works. We order, he fixes one or two things. We order boards. We have the boards shipped to our friend Justin the day before DEF CON. The parts go to Jeff, Justin like just before DEF CON. We're waiting on the batteries, always the batteries. So we're like, well, we can make this happen. So we get to crypto, and I'll we'll talk about battery issues generally later in the talk. But um, you know, here's a close-up of the crypto badge without a battery for everyone who needs it. So it's important that I, I mention, right, we have the toasters, we have the parts, we have the boards, it's the day before DEF CON. We take it all to DEF CON, we're like, yeah, we'll assemble a hundred boards, no problem. Look at that, yeah, we can get people to hand assemble that for us. Um, no. <laughs> like, Carrie's lovely assembly process for a hundred boards was not how it went the night before DEF CON. Um, oh, well, there was a video. Um, but the, so these are the badges that actually ended up getting assembled and flashed. I think we made maybe 30 out of the 100 that year. Um, and we decided to have LiPos. And um, actually, the, we only ever got to the test firmware. Um, but for three weeks from concept to actually actual delivery, I consider it somewhat of a success, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I, I wonder what it could have been if we had had more time. Um, but the thing about badge life that really consumes you is you get really ambitious, and then there's just never enough time to get it done. So um, the the other part of this uh, badge is that it's also a 2FA token. So when you plug it in, you'll tap the center um, capacitive touch button, and you could like use it as a 2FA token because you know Crypto Village it should work with something crypto related, um, and then it's blinky and pretty, and and you tap the middle and the lights change. And so there's our test firmware on it, which basically has two light settings. But people were thrilled; they were like, "This is amazing!" We had people line up. We sold out as many as we could. And then we sold the empty boards. People love the empty boards. We sold boards with just populated LEDs. People bought those too. And then we were just selling the parts at that point. We're like, go ahead, <laughs> just take it all. Like, worry, we can't do anything with this. And we sold enough to basically recoup our costs. Um, and we told people, we're like, as is, we'll sell you for cheap, like, no problem. Like, we just want to make our money back, take it, like, enjoy. Um, and so ultimately, here are some boards with just the LEDs on it, not actually completed. But, you know, that we had these beautiful lanyards. Um, and we sold some in bags, and this is basically what it looked like. Um, and then this was basically badge life. This was the first meetup we had had. Um, and this was like the kind of badges made that year. Um, and some people just bring theirs um, from previous conferences that they've made, and they wear them around, and, and there's like lots of pride. I have a couple of these with me. Um, some have batteries, some don't, but please feel free to take a look. Um, um, so year, th year three, and I was like, guys, I don't think I want to do this again. And if we're going to do it, we have to start the day after DEF CON. Because three weeks from concept to actual delivery um, is kind of difficult. So um, we get to work. We're thinking about inner badge operability on the Slack group. We're talking, do we do Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, communication protocols? You know, where are we sourcing parts? Let's Let's talk about PC manufacturing. Like, let's really think this through. Let's get together as a group. Let's buy parts as a group. Um, let's get accessories as a group. Let's figure this out. Let's reduce our costs because um, ultimately, the stress of the burden of the cost of building these badges on your own is really difficult. And while the Crypto and Privacy Village is a somewhat entity exists, we have no money. So it's basically I stick something on my credit card, and I'm like, dear God, I hope they make that $4,000 back at DEF CON. Um, and so uh, parts assembly and manufacturing um, 
you know, some of the biggest things I've learned is that coordinating sending parts to the manufacturer is really important. Some of you probably know this much better than I, um, but some are very picky about when they want you to send it. Sometimes the parts don't arrive. Sometimes they give you a really small window, but in fact, if you send it earlier, they're fo totally fine with it. Um, you know, double check that they have the right bomb. I'm gonna say this for year three. Um, they started going to assemble our badge this year and they were like, these parts don't match up. What are you doing? And we're like, uh, didn't you see the bomb we sent last week? And they're like, no, we've been doing everything under the assumption of the bomb you sent us two months ago. Um, and so we learned a little bit of a uh, few lessons there is making sure they have the right one. Maybe not sending them any until you're actually sure it's done. Um, Plan for about two weeks for the PCBs to be made. Uh, there are always delays in China. Um, in fact, uh, assembly it was shockingly fast. Um, and we did full assembly flashing and testing for our third badge because we were just absolutely floored and exhausted from all of the work that the badge had taken the year before. And so, um, you know, prepare for unknown delays for anyone who's ordered anything from China. They'll tell you, oh, the person who's supposed to pick up your package didn't come today. He's sick. Delay two days. And you're like, wait, no, I, I need these, like, tomorrow. Like, you have to, like, I paid you express shipping. And they're like, sorry, nothing we can do. Um, so it's really important to make sure that you uh, give yourself a lot of lead time. Um, lanyards is, is surprisingly e easy to order. Um, they're cheap and it's one of those things that's an incremental cost where you're like, I'm going to get the cheapest lanyard with really crappy, like white, pasty, like type. And then you're like, and then other people one up you and you're like, okay, I'll get the nice, like full color, uh, beautiful, silky ones. And then all of a sudden your lanyard cost goes from a thousand dollars to, uh, $1,500. And you're like, where did that happen? Um, and that's what Carrie is going to experience this year. <laughs> and so I want to talk about boxes. Um, so I had this great idea. I was like, I'm all about the presentation, you guys. So Carl does the bomb, or Carl and Justin Bates. Car Justin basically writes the firmware with Carl. Carl does the schematic. I help do layout and do art and design and do the puzzle around it. And so I was like, guys, I really want the presentation to just be beautiful. I'm going to figure out a way to get boxes. Great. Alibaba, there are box, box manufacturers. These are, I wish I, I should have brought a box with me. Oh, okay, uh, Carrie has one with him. Um, it's magnetic, it's open, it's got gold foil on the top and in the inside. And they're like, and I'm like, great, you know, I want 500 of these because, you know, the third year, the second year was semi failure. Let's go from 100 to 500, could be badge life. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna get 500 boxes. I think this will be no problem. One, 500 boxes is a lot when they're like boxes. Like, <laughs> like put a bunch of 500 boxes together, that's a lot of boxes. But I think, so I order a prototype, which they charge me like $40 for, I'm like, fine. Because they tell me per box, it's going to be 250. I'm like, sold, this is the most beautiful thing in the entire world, 250, we can do this times 500. And I'm like, ready, I put in the order, they make them. They're like, great, um, it's gonna take, uh, it's gonna cost $1,600 to ship them to you. And I was like, what are you talking about? $1,600 for shipping? They're like, well, yeah, it's really big. It's like, it's like a big volume. And I was like, you didn't tell me shipping was gonna cost this much. I thought this was like all total. So I learned to ask about shipping on Alibaba. Um, and then they, they ba I was like, there's no way. Like $1,600 is more than I'm paying for the boxes themselves. That's gonna double the cost, forget this. So I say to them, how much, okay, it's May. Put them on a ship and send them to me. Now it's $700. I'm like, I can do this. Well, <laughs> have you shipped anything by freighter ship it, from China? It takes a really long time and ships get delayed for things like weather. And then they sit at the port at customs for a really long time and you may not get them. And then they have to get on a truck and get to you. So ultimately they were delivered to me on the first day of DEF, the Thursday before DEF CON, so DEF CON starts on Friday, to my hotel in Las Vegas in boxes. <laughs> and my boyfriend is like, what on earth is all of this? And I was like, honey, this is just the beginning. <laughs> so 
I have all these boxes and the hotel, now <laughs> it's Vegas, charges you $500 to receive an item that comes on a pallet. And you're like, great, this is just almost the cost of just flying them on a plane. <laughs> and the stress I've been experiencing for the last few weeks, and anyone on the Badge Life Slack would know, I was probably like, there are no boxes. I spent all this money, like there are no boxes. Um, and so, you know, boxes, I really am glad I did them. Would I do them again? I don't know. Right now I'm saying no. However, badge life happens, and maybe in March I'll be like, badges. I should do boxes again, and I'll find ones that, like, collapse. And then maybe it's a smaller thing, and then maybe I'll be fine, and it won't cost as much. But So batteries. I did not know what Carrie told me, which is that you can only bring batteries on a plane for personal use. Whoops. Uh, I just, you know, so the first year we did double A's, I just bought a ton at Costco. Thank you, Kirkland brand products. Um, Brought those with me. Those were great. We had a whole bunch extra. Um, but this chat here is with our light. So this is the second year. We are building that badge in three weeks or less. And we say to PCB Way, and I don't want to get them in trouble, but as we say to them, we need lipos last minute. How do we get them? You know, we've designed this badge to have a lipo. They're like, no problem. We'll get you the. And if you can read this, it says, one very important pint point. Do not mean that the package has the battery. And I was like, okay. Otherwise, item will be blocked. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, thank you. Because I, again, I knew nothing about batteries, except for, you know, I think this is about the time they were exploding on planes. So I was like, mm, who knows what's going on here. I'll just write headset in the invoice to replace the battery. And I'm like, sure, I'm sure this is like paperwork thing. I'm not sure what's going on here. And so package has PCB stencil and headsets. You have to remember this. This is important. I'm like, <laughs> and I was like, I can. I've written it down. Like, <laughs> trust me, China. I've got it. And so we get these boxes of Beats headphones. And what are in the Beats headphones? <laughs> but lipos. And so we get these and we're like, oh no, have we broken the law? <laughs> like, what have we done to get these lipos? Like, we might go and, like, you know, import jail because we've taken them. Turns out, like, duty pretty much is on the shipper, and they're taking the risk for us. So let me just give a shout out to ordering things from China and how far they will go for their customers. <laughs> Because where did they get these boxes of Beats headphones? And there were like six. There were like six Beats boxes. So um, second year, also worth noting about problems with batteries. Just make sure you order the right connectors. <laughs> so we're like, three weeks. We can do this. No problem. Where we ended up hitting like our biggest problem was we get the batteries. And I go to plug it in. And I'm like, oh, Carl, it doesn't fit. And we realized, like, I think the, the like, female plug uh, was 2.5 and the battery was 2.54. And so we were like, okay, we ca what can we get, you know, ASAP? So it turns out we can get things from DigiKey really, really quick because we had gotten, uh, we, we tried assembling stuff at Justin's house, um, like, four nights before DEF CON, like, a few of them that we had. And this is where we basically figured it out. And so we are like, okay, we'll buy strippers, we'll, like, we'll just like make it happen, we'll get a team together, we'll replace them, this won't be a big problem. Um, impossible to find the right like crimper um, for, the, to, for the batteries. So um, we, we ultimately uh, just had a, and I wish I had pictures of this, all this is teaching me is that I should take more pictures. Um, we had this line of people and one group was just you know, taking off the, the connector and putting the batteries down and somebody else was supposed to be crimping. Well, the person who's taking off the battery head is moving much faster and we just ended up with a bunch of batteries with live heads just sitting around and they're throwing them into a box and I come over, I'm like, oh my God, thank God nothing has exploded. Like, this is just gonna be like, Vegas is gonna be evacuated. Like, this is gonna be really bad. Um, so big problem why we actually had a bunch of badges that just didn't have batteries for a period of time because, um, we were like trying to crimp them as fast as possible. Ultimately, we were, we were just like kind of like uh, hand doing it. 
Um, and so assembly, um, what I've ultimately learned is that hand assembly is not a joke. Um, in that, I would never do it again. Um, I tried hand assembling. Uh, the first badge we did, Jorge, I, uh, his now wife, basically, I guess, helped a lot with, with the assembly there. Um, and I know we had the majority of that assembled for small parts, but adding on a few of the larger parts actually was a ton of work. And so the second year when we were like, yeah, we'll just, you know, we had a stencil and solder paste too and, and a toast, one toaster oven for all these badges and it didn't quite work very well. And so th this past year we did, this is our badge this, this past year and we were like, okay, we've, we've gone big, we started really early, let's get a professional assembly, we're definitely gonna do it. And I think it was really, really great and definitely worth it. Um, and I really um, admire PCB Way for being very diligent and very quick on their um, uh, assembly for us and uh, doing testing. Um, basically, while they were testing, Justin and I were on Skype with them from like 10 p.m. till 3 a.m. troubleshooting as they go through all of the problems. And I'm sure many of you in the room have done something similar, but saying, oh, no, now try this. Okay, well, we don't know what's going on here. Um, originally, they were supposed to put the screens on for us, but they were like, eh, it's really flappy. This is one of the pictures they sent us. They're like, it's really flappy. We're concerned about shipping them to you, we're afraid they'll break. And we're like, okay, well, we'll assemble the screens. Forget about testing all the screens. We'll get to that when we get there. So ultimately, this badge this past year, we're like, okay, professional assembly for all of the parts except for the screen, the micro SD, the knob, the battery, to flash them and to stick them in a box with a lanyard and some stickers. I'm like, that should take no time. Me, by myself, I can do those things for 500 badges. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I was up till 2 a.m. at Justin's house assembling these badges, um, just doing the very simple parts. And so it really gave me a profound respect for um, having assembly done professionally, um, including even the little things. And so uh, here is a group, now we're at DEF CON again, and of course we did, because it was me by myself at Justin's house before DEF CON trying to do it as he's writing the firmware for the badge. Um, we were not even close to done. 500 is a lot of badges. Like, he's gone from 100 to 500. Oh, just wait. It's so many, it's so many. And so um, w this is basically people from the Badge Life Slack who are like, yeah, I'm at DEF CON. I'm here to help you. Like, just tell me what to do, and I'll sit in a room for as many hours to help you as I possibly can. And I'm like, you guys are the greatest people I've ever met. Um, and so people worked day in, day out just to help us get these 500 badges. Um, oops. No. Um, and the other thing I'm going to mention is because um, I was, I'm, I'm very thoughtful about, um, and I don't know how much time I have left, I'm, I'm going kind of slow. Um, after the first year badge when we couldn't do anything in KiCad, my goal was to really master doing design in KiCad. I was like, I want to be really good at this, this is really important to me. And so after doing that small little badge for the second year, um, in probably a night, I was like addicted to doing art in KiCad. Um, there's been some trend I've seen of people doing profiles and pictures and different types of art in KiCad. And so I decided, I'm just gonna make these keys. I think it'll be fun, I'll, it'll be a puzzle, I'll hand them out, they're super cheap. Um, and they were a hit, and it's something I'm probably gonna do again this year. Um, and so ultimately, this was the final product of what we, what we handed out last year, or this past year. Um, it had Wi-Fi, BLE, I have this badge with me, although it's not charged, um, and two capacitive touch buttons and a knob. Um, it communicated with other DEF CON badges, uh, other Badge Life badges that were around. Um, it had some stuff to do with the puzzle, um, and I, I think there was a lot more we were planning to do, but you know, when you're spending all the time working on the hardware, you kind of forget about the software. Um, but it blinked, and it detected nearby badges. Um, and we had this like joke encryption firmware on it, ransomware, um, until DEF CON started. Um, and so what was our final cost for this year? It was $18,158 um, out of pocket. Because the year before, we had made you know, 100 badges, we sold 30. Maybe we had a couple thousand dollars. Um, <laughs> so we were like, never again. Um, so ultimately, we, we made our money back and some, and when we made all this money, we were like, what are we going to do with it? And I'll kind of mention that at the end. But these are the badges that came out of this past year, um, and I have a bunch of these with me too that people can check out and play with. Just please don't take them. They mean the world to me. Um, so year four, 
who knows? Um, it, it's February and we're already behind schedule. Um, but we do have a design. I did import the edge cuts, so we are in moving forward, um, and we were, you know, focusing on that a bit. So I'm going to touch a little bit about PCB art. Um, one, um, Inkscape, KiCad, and my imagination is pretty much what drives me here. Um, I learned the hard way that you cannot just hack edge cuts. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever dealt, dealt with this, but um, it took me a really long time. Actually, it was Benchoff's article where I was like, oh, <laughs> you can just like import something into DXF and then Im you know import that in and it works no problem. Because I was importing um, a design, it wasn't working, and then tracing the design by hand. And for the last two years, that wasn't a big problem because it was like an octagon or a, like, yeah, an octagon and then, you know, a bad shape and who cares what it looked like. But this year it was really important to, and for year four, it will be very important for us to have very precise board lines. And so, um, you know, that that's a big tool and that, that I've found is very helpful um, to making very intricate designs because I've learned by doing the keys as well is that you can do very, very intricate stuff um, uh, and, and it's no problem. So for everything else, I just, um, you know, import it, um, pull the like what dot mod file, drop it into um, a text editor and do control find for F silk else and then replace it with the desired layer. And hands down this always works. And so what I do is I create layers in Inkscape of what I want to um, make. And so on the previous badge here, um, when I wanted to make these capacitive touch buttons, I just in Inkscape, you know, used the little like paint can tool filled it in, exported that, you know, did this process, made it copper, and I was done. And so that's been really helpful. Um, and so um, this was kind of some concept to actual actualization of what we've done. Um, our original pri Crypto Privacy Village badge from last year started as a, a sketch I did, and you know, people are like, wow, you're such a great artist. I'm like, hell no, like, I am not good. But um, these are some general design ideas and thoughts in working with different ideas. Um, and ultimately, this is what we ended up with. Um, and I have some prototypes with me of this as well. Um, and then these are the keys I made. And um, I'm definitely going to do this again because people love bare board PCBs. They think they're just the greatest thing in the whole wide world. And to give somebody something cool that they think is really great, um, if that gets them into hardware or, or um, you know, screaming at PCB way or <laughs> screaming at KiCad, uh, then that's great. So those are the final keys. I have some of those with me too. Um, and then, so these are the final tips. Um, start e early. 500 is a lot. Uh, don't overcommit. So one of the things you can see from our badge last year, if you take a close look at it, there's there's a ton of stuff on it, just absolutely a ton of stuff. Um, there was audio, it streamed DEF CON radio and you could walk around with the badge and listen to DEF CON radio. Um, this year we are drastically cutting our bomb, cutting our costs, um, doing less because we just, we were killing ourselves last year to do it. Um, buy the easy stuff early. If you know you're gonna need lanyards and boxes, just buy them in January, buy it now, do it early. Um, prepare for failure, just figure that, you know, it's not going to turn out exactly as you planned, and that's okay. People will actually just be happy that they can see it and think it's cool, and you can always scale down. Um, know the challenges and benefits of manufacturing in China versus the United States. Um, we ha have this conversation in Slack a lot. Um, you know, there are some people who've worked primarily with China and some who are going through like microfab in the United States, and both have their benefits and um, problems. Um, but I've found generally on a whole that China is significantly faster. Um, when, question, when there are questions, just ask for help. Um, and this is why we kind of started this Badge Life community is it's not really being a part of cool kids group or anything, but really um, I was, you know, flailing and trying to figure out how to do these things. And it was great that a bunch of people came together to help. Um, and so we hope to be that source for other people who are interested in doing this. Um, and when in doubt, just hack it. Um, uh, friends and strangers are lifesavers. Basically, they'll assemble your boards for you um, and not ask anything in return, which amazes me every time. Um, and then know what to do with all the cash money. So we sold the badge last year at $120 as a fundraiser for the Crypto Village because basically we were like, we're not doing this out of pocket ever again. We're telling people it's a fundraiser um, and we made a, 
a lot of cash, we paid the taxes to the state of Nevada, and they were like, okay, whose name? And I was like, what do you mean? And they're like, someone's got to pay this tax. And so it's under my, <laughs> I'm paying the tax for these badges, um, which is what kind of got us to building an entity. And there have been other people who have built badges who just have entities built just because it's easier. Um, and then sell the scraps and parts um, if you have extras or give them away. Um, and that's all for me. Hopefully it was good.